last Sunday of 2020, that we look at ourselves and we prepare for even greater things. God said, greater things shall we do. Amen. And if we're ever going to do those greater things, we've got to be the church that God envisioned, that God spoke about, and said, greater things shall be done in, in you in the last days. So if you have your Bibles, let this go right into the word of the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading, so you may stay seated and just follow along. If you have your Bibles, we're going to start at verse 9. And it says, For we are laborers together with God. We are all working on this. This is something that we're all facing, that we're all involved with. It. That's why I said I'm preaching to everyone today. Because we're all laborers together with God. And you are the God's husbandry, and you're in God's building. Another translation says that we are God's field, and we are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. And I, I probably what brought this one to my mind is the past uh, two weeks we've been helping build a church in a day. And uh, several men in here, thank you for those that have come in uh, as a part of that. Thinking about all that is involved in building and the process. And we, a lot of times people look at the, the outer shell and think of all the work that was done, forgetting about some of the very first basics of that building. Because they wasn't there for that. And they, they don't realize, and they build up from there, but they don't always realize the importance of the foundation of that, how it started. And it says that I have laid the foundation and another building there on. So even though God has set the foundation, he says, we're building on that. So we're building on what God has already set in place. It, it's God's word, it's God's plan. And we're going to add to that. We're going to build up our, our house on what God has built on the foundation. But let everyone take heed how he buildeth their own. So we've got to take heed. We've got to look. We've got to take inventory. Sometimes we may have to stop and do some inspection, making sure that we're building the house that we're building on God's foundation, that it is sure and it is secure. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So you can't build your own foundation. You can't say, well, I don't want my foundation to have this and that. I want, I, this is how I want my foundation to build, and I'm going to build on that. God says you can't do that. You can't have your own foundation. That he has already built the foundation. See, as we're looking at uh, the scripture, it's Paul writing to the church. I'm going to give you a little, uh, little foundation. He saw some things that was going on in the church that uh, he said, no, th this doesn't look right. The Lord began to deal with him and tell him, and this is how we have Corinthians here. Paul saw some of the division. He saw some of the uh, moral issues that was happening. Uh, fornication, uh, marriage issues, people being selfish, uh, thinking of, of how the world thinks. Uh, there was pride coming in, and all that kind of stuff was starting to settle in on the church. So Paul begins to write to the Corinthian church, saying, "You got to, you can't walk away from this. If God has already has a foundation. It's sure. You can't just build on whatever you feel like building. Just because your past has brought you here doesn't mean that it's okay to build any old way you want." You've got to have absolute truth. You've got to build on the love of God. And you've got to have some godliness in you. And by doing this, you know, you're going to build a strong house. And if you don't do it, you're, you're, you're messing up. You don't even realize that you're messing things up for yourself. And those that are following you because uh, something that is not going to last. And as we read on, the next verse is, Now being have built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, so all these things, he said, there's all kinds of things that people are going to try to build on. He said, every man's work shall be made manifest. So no matter how you build what you build, what's really going to matter is the foundation that you're building on. Because it's going to be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Which day is he talking about? What day is going to declare everything? Last day. Judgment. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So it's not just on how you're building your your house. It's he said it's going to it's going to come to fruition 
we're going to be able to find out exactly how you build it. He said, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Paul's reminding, he says, don't you realize who you are, what you are? You are the temple of God. You are the house of God. When you, are, when you receive the Holy Ghost, he's talking to the church that has already repented and baptized, filled the Holy Ghost. He goes, don't you realize that you house God and you have the Holy Ghost? You have God's spirit inside of you. You are the temple of God. He says, you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. You have God in you. If any man defile the temple of God, he shall destroy, or him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy. What kind of house are you? What kind of temple are you? Let no man deceive him himself. In other words, you can't just justify the life that I'm living on. Now that we're in 2020, I can't just say, well, this is the way it is. Hey, Pastor, we're in 2020 now. We, we, we can do what we want to do. Is that what this says? See, we've got to build on the foundation because it's the only foundation. I can't build on what I want to do. It says, uh, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you see it and seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. See, people think it's foolish sometimes to believe the way we believe. As apostolic Christians, uh, there are certain things that we see in the reading of the Word of God, and God commands us to do things. And some of the world said, man, that's silly. That's ridiculous. I don't. And they're like, well, why do you do that? Well, that's the foundation. That There is no other foundation. I can't build my house on the way I want it to be built or how I want it to be built. I've got to build it. See, and I'm the builder. But this is the foundation. He said, if any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he has taken the wise in their own craftness. In other words, in their own thinking, they are trapped. Again, the, the word, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Another translation says worthless. So I want to speak to you for a little bit here on the importance of of foundation. How important. Because we are we have received a lot of things in our life this 2020. And we or we have to build off of what we you know what we see, what we're seeing. Everything we see every day, there's something that's going into our mind. We've got to we've got to know is is that okay to build on or is that something that's not part of the that I I don't need to make sure it's not part of my foundation. Is that something that is okay? To allow into my home, allow into my mind, allow into my kids' life? Or is that something that is going to, to alter the foundation and have something happen that I'm going to regret? And when I begin to think of that, I begin to think of the Tower of, of Pisa. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. They better known as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's a freestanding bell tower uh, known worldwide for its four-degree lean. It came as a result of unstable foundation. Its height is 184 feet tall. It's constructed out of marble. It weighs 16 and a half thousand tons. Uh, it has seven, seven bells. Each have a different note according to the musical scale. So why has this large, beautiful building having tilt, a lean into it? The, the issue is its foundation. Even though it, as tall as it is, it, as heavy as it is, it only has a nine foot thick foundation. And for the height and the width uh, and the weight of that building, the foundation is not strong enough. The, the tower actually began to uh, be built in the 12th century. And it was built on soft ground, something that could not properly support its structure and its weight. And it started to lean as it was being built. 
and it worsened throughout the, the completion of the construction in the 14th century. So it took about 200 years to actually build it because of the wars that had stopped and then they were start to continue. So it took about 200 years. And as it's being built, it is continuing to lean more and more and more. And in 1990, uh, they had some of the top engineers come together and to try to see what they could do to salvage this because realizing if it leans anymore, it's going to topple. Uh, it had reached a five and a half degree when they began to come together and work on this and figure out a way and uh, somehow to try to, to get it straightened. Uh, they got it a little bit better. They got it to a, a, a 3.9 degree. And when we look at this picture, I think everyone can look at it and agree that if it had a good foundation, it would have never never been like this. And at some point, it is probably going to crumble and fall. And that's something that we have been taught as children, how important our foundation is. But we don't always think of our foundation. We think of what's above that. We think of the walls and the roof, and we think how important that is. And it is. But there's something that is so more important, more important than a wall, more important than this, the roof, and the, and the doors, and the pictures, and, the, and all the pictures that you put on the wall, and, and it is the foundation. We've been taught that all our life. We know that we need a solid foundation. We, 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 we grew up on uh, the three little pigs, so we know how important it is when we're building. The three, there was three little pigs that came, and the first little pig built his house out of straw, and, and the second pig built his house out of sticks, and the third pig uh, built his house out of rocks and stone. And all of a sudden, the big dad wolf came along, and he told him, uh, let me in, let me in, you little piggy pig. I'm going to huff, and I'm going to puff, and I'm going to blow your house down. And as he began to puff and puff and blow, we know the story of how the first house came tumbling down, the second house came tumbling down, and it was only the final house, the house that was built on stone, the house that was built on, on a firm foundation and built on solid rock, was the only house that stood. We know that wolf, that wolf was, uh, was trying to get in and he blew, but he could not get into that third and final house. And we know scriptures that, that the devil, the thief, that wolf in sheep's clothing, he comes, but not to, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is something that he has been after, especially this year. He has not been trying to destroy homes, destroy lives, destroy the country. There are people that are fighting each other that used to be great neighbors. Now can't stand one another. And he's destroyed relationships. He's des destroyed the way we even live. We, 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 we now have different, uh, we look at people differently. We think different about them because of the way they think. They don't think the way I think. Well, how can they think like that? They call themselves a Christian. How can you think like that and believe like that? And that's exactly how the enemy tries to get in. And all of a sudden, if, if we're not careful, our house will begin to lean and shift one way. See, the devil knows that if our foundation is built on a solid foundation, he can't get in. We've been taught that as children. It's been taught in stories. It's been taught in the Word of God. But somehow the enemy begins, and he's always done it, and, and I have seen him done it so much even this year. Put thoughts in our minds. But well, that's not needed no more. That's not necessary. That's a waste of time. That's old-fashioned. People don't think like that. People don't act like that. People don't live like that today, Pastor. You don't understand. And as... As pastor, there are, there are things that sometimes the Lord just will put into my mind to kind of remind me how important things are, how important foundation is. Because if we're not careful, things will start to lean and start to shift. And it doesn't just affect, the, you know, the parents. Because if, I, if a parent starts to shift, their kids... The next generation? Anybody had to do that again? We'll fall down. <laughs> See, it's, 
it's very easy for us just to think out of the, the outer shell, what we show people. And we don't always focus on what is actually is getting in to our foundation. Matthew says it like this. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. By what we see when he has to eye, by if there's a lean or not a lean. That's their outward appearance. That's, you know, what they're doing. All, all the things, how they're worshiping, what their prayer lives look. Like what, what what they're like on Sunday in church, what they're like on Sunday when church is over. By the fruits we shall know them. Next verse says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So if you do the will, if you have the right ingredients in your foundation, you're going to make it. Many will say to me in that day, that's judgment day again, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have, have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? Lord, I've done so many things. I show up to church, I pay my tithes, I sing, I, I, I teach, I do this, I do that, I help this, I, I give to that mission. And, and man, I, Lord, I do all these things, surely, by all the work that I'm doing. And I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to make it. I've done all these things. And the Lord goes on and says, And then what profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In other words, there's things that's gotten in that you didn't even realize was in there. And you thought that just from up the, the foundation up was all that I was looking at. And because that's what all you let, let, let people see. This is what you let people see in the job. This is what you let people see in the church. This is what you let people see in the neighborhood. This is what you saw, showed everybody. But deep down inside, there was something else. In the underlayments of your soul, in the foundation of your life, there are things that you allow in that cause the wind. And the Lord says, I don't know you. See, if you allow your foundation to be compromised, it affects you more than you know. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. Kind of funny how the Lord put all that together in his word, didn't it? He said, And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house. See, no matter if you, if you live a perfect life, which none of us do, we're all here in the world, none of us are perfect, or you live the worst life. Storms happen. Pandemics take place. Situations happen. Winds blow. Rain, it rains. You're going to have a storm in your life. It says, and when, if you go upon the rock, when all these things happen, it says, Bob says, it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So, in other words, you made it. You're going to make it. No matter what comes your way, you're going to make it. And every, but everyone that hears these things of mine and does them not, those that don't apply all the word of God in their foundation, you, you, you're building your house on what you want. You're not building it on this. It says, everyone that hears these things of mine and does them not shall be like a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rains, those same rains came, those same floods came, those same winds blew and beat upon the house. And it fell. And great was the fall. And when I began to look and think and pray about that, the reason it was so great was it didn't just affect you. The foundation affected the whole house. Mm -hmm. The whole family. Sometimes, generations of family. And when you really look at the Word of God and you look at how important, that's what we're talking about, the importance of the foundation. Scripture tells us that the Lord thy God is a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers, in other words, the parents. Because of what the parents did upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. And as soon as we get to that word, well, the first thing that comes to mind, well, I don't hate God. Uh, he, he must be talking about someone else. But remember what God says. If you love me, you will keep
Oh, that's, it, it can't be that important, Pastor. It can't be that important. Can I just build my house in any way I want and just make it look good on the outside? As long as you and my brothers and sisters, and that's all I show. And that's what the Lord has been kind of impressing upon me. Are they doing it just to say, get the church to say, well done? Get the pastor to pat you on the back? When God Almighty is going, I'm the one that's judging you. I'm the one that has the final word on that day. Don't you realize some of the things that you're allowing in, in your heart? And as this year is closing and we're getting ready to enter into a different year, we need to realize that we're still building on a foundation. <laughs> Our foundation was started when we saved, when we were saved, but we're not done building yet. I say that to the to the, those that have got the Holy Ghost this year. And I'm, I'm saying that to the, those that got the Holy Ghost a hundred years ago. Your foundation is not completely done and built. Yes, you're building walls and you're building the roof and you're putting the windows and the doors and you're, you're building the house, but there's so much more that you've got to make sure that your foundation is still in check. And that's why today I feel like we need to check. We need to take some spiritual inventory, make corrections as necessary as we enter out of this year and getting ready to enter into a new year. So when those storms of life hit, and trust me, they're going to hit. They're going to hit, and things may even get worse. We don't like to think of that. What do we want? We're just going to fix all this. I heard that. I think just going to disappear from that. Storms are going to hit. Rain's going to come. And what we do is what matters. As long as our house is built on solid ground, that wolf can huff and puff all he wants. He's not getting in. In order for you and I to avoid the problem of having our house lean and, and having that kind of I knew you not words said to us, we need to look at the story. We need to understand and, and allow this to speak to us so that we can make decisions and choices, not just today, but every day as we move into our new year. So when we look at this story, we see two builders in this story. So there's only two choices that I see. It, it can, when it matters the ultimate truth, we only have two options. We can either trust Christ, obey his commandments, follow his example, or not. It's either all in or not in at all. We can't do it halfway, we can't do it half-hearted. We've got to do it with all of our mind, heart, and soul. Now, the world would have us to believe otherwise. The world would have you say that you've got all the choices. You can make any choice you want. We're humans. We're Americans. We have that freedom. And, and yes, we do. We have the freedom to choose Christ. We're not. See, our culture likes to offer a different kind of approach when it comes to religion. They like to offer a buffet style. And uh, I like buffet styles. Matter of fact, 2020 has shut down some of my favorite buffet restaurants. <laughs> I like buffet. But when it comes to live for God, we cannot have a buffet lifestyle for man. And you say, well, what is that? That is where you try to pick and choose the elements or the scriptures or what traditions that you personally like out of scripture. I'll pick this religion. I'll get a little bit of this lifestyle. I'll choose when and how much church I put into my life. I'll get a little scoop of Bible reading. I don't like that too much. And I'll have a little bit of prayer. I'll pray more if I need stuff. If I don't need nothing, I won't pray as much. You know, I can choose the amount of prayer. I don't let this tell me how much prayer and how much study and how much time to live. I'll choose. I'll choose to give this much time when I, when I have the, the extra, I'll give to God. But when I don't have the extra, well then, I, God is just going to wait. And wait. And wait. And wait. And we wonder why God's not pouring out blessings when we have 
said no to what he said. If you give, I'll be one of the winds of heaven. I, no to the times when I will worship. I, if I feel like it, if that thing's going good, if, if the song is right, and, 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 and someone's getting the Holy Ghost, then I'll get excited, then I'll worship. But if we're, if we're, if we're in the middle of a, of a message, the parents are preaching and feel like it, he's beating me down, then I'm not going to worship, and I'm not going to pray, and I'm just going to, can't wait to get over it. That's the kind of format. Preach me a hot message, man. Don't, don't try to teach to me, even though that's what pastors are supposed to do. Preach, teach, direct, correct, admonish, lift up, exhort. Bring Brother Randall back and preach a hot message. Just tickle my ears. Let me be excited. Don't try to preach and correct me. I don't want that. That's not what I put on my plate. I want a little bit of godliness. That's, I don't want to stand out in this world. I want a little bit of holiness. That, that's too much. I, don't, I, I, want to, I want to fit in with the world. I want to look like the world. I want to act like Don't ask me to, to be separate from the world. What did the foundation say? Be separate. Saith the Lord. Amen. But I don't like that. I don't want that much serving. Too much godliness. Too much holiness. Give me some worldliness. Yeah, put up. Put extra. Yeah. And gravy. I like that. Don't tell me what I can and can't put on and in my temple. It's my temple. It's my body. I can do whatever I want with it. And after a while, we begin to think like that. And that way of thinking affects our foundation. And eventually, it's going to affect our children's foundation. See, God doesn't see it that way. God's word benefits you. It protects you. It is a part of your foundation. If you pick and choose what scriptures you allow and what you like, you won't have the protection that the foundation is supposed to give you. When you compromise God's word, you compromise your foundation. So according to the word, there's only two ways. The way of Christ and everything else. Which way do you choose? One way leads to life, the other leads to death. Now the man who built the house on sand, I want to I want us to think about this because th this, is what, this is the part that the Lord kind of impressed on me about most. When we look at the man that built in, in this story, that built his house on the sand, there's a lot of things that he did right. I want us to look at it just for a moment. I'm not going to read too much longer. But it was evident that he was very diligent in his building. He's very energetic. He worked very hard at putting the walls and the windows and the doors and the roof on it. He did a great job. It looked awesome. How so great? Not going to look. See, it was no easy. It's not an easy task to build your house. So as long as you're building, I mean, you're, you're doing a good job. You're, great. you're doing a great job of building. And especially the, the, the guy in this story, you know, he didn't have the power tools that we had. He didn't have a well, uh, Home Depot to run to and get all the supplies. He had to carry the stone. He had to carry the wood. He had to cut it all. He had to form his own bricks. It was, it was hard work. He didn't quit. He completed the structure. The house was complete. Beautiful house. Think of some of the houses that you ride by that are for sale right now in 2020 here in Pennsville. Beautiful houses. Great job. But yet in the end, in, this, in the scriptures, all his hard work was for nothing. Because the house fell down. I point that out because we often sometimes confuse our, our busyness with just working and for God and coming to church and saying prayers and doing that. We are our busyness for God as godliness. I'm good. I went to church. I'm fine. I said, I said prayer. I'm fine. I did this. I did that. And we start naming all the things that we have done. The 
just like the story. I've done this, Lord, and I've done this. And I've, done, I've prayed, and I've cast out devils, and I've done this, Lord. And what was God's response to them? You never focused on what I told you to focus on. You built on other things, and you didn't build on the foundation. You want to hear those words, well done. See, that's what the good build heard. The one that built on the foundation, well done. But the one that built on sand, that built on what he thought was a great area and what he thought was right, God said, I never knew you could part from me. Because you had the iniquity of sin in your life. You thought that was okay. You thought that was, a, was fine. Because the rest of the house looks so good. We assume that if someone is being consistent and has an energy, that they must be sincere, true Christians then. And too many times, we are getting farther and farther. The higher we go, we're leaning farther and farther away from where we should be. So sometimes our mistake is we make ministry involvement as the mark bench of a ride spiritually. As long as I'm consistent, as long as I keep showing up, I'm going to be fine. And we never look at the foundation. What am I building on? What am I allowing in my home? What am I allowing in my kids' life? We don't look at that. Because all we see is the pretty picture, the pretty door that we let everyone else see. And that's a big mistake. Because all the activity and all the service and all that business and all the church attendance could be built upon foundation of sand. Some people, especially those in the past several years, seem to care more about the outer appearance. I want to make everyone think that I'm fine with God, I have a relationship with God, I'm good with God, and they forget the foundation. Think about it like this. A house that was built on the sand, it was built properly it all appeared to be built very well. Good material, good, you know, high quality um, product was put in, it was fine. But deep down, something wasn't right. It doesn't fall right away. It begins to have cracks in the walls, cracks in the floor, cracks in the ceiling. And you just patch it up. You put a little mud on the paint, you put a picture over it. And you say, it's fine, it looks good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. But you never, and you notice something's wrong, and you never stop to say, Lord, what am I putting on the foundation? You just consider all your activeness and all your busyness and check, I must be good. I'm still, I'm still going to church. I felt the head when they said, pray, and I said a little prayer. So I must be good, right? See, I'll highlight this because sometimes there's no physical sign in our spiritual house. Everything seems to be fine on the surface. We consider ourselves very successful. I'm here in church today, right? So I must be fine. But it doesn't mean that everything's good deep down on the surface. Because underneath it all, just waiting for a real storm to hit, there's hidden weaknesses, and that is because there has been a lack of true foundation built. See, it is possible to accomplish great things in this world without God. You can have a business, you can have a career, you can, you can make lots of money, you can have good marriage, good family, you can have a lot of friends, you can do good things, you can give money to charity, you can get, teach little me, you can be a big brother or a big sister, you can adopt a third world baby from another country, you can do pro bono legal for the poor, you can volunteer, you can retire, uh, go to the nursing homes, you can change every flat tire that you see on 295, you can get to the need, you can have a good life. See, you can do big important things, you can be impressive, people can look at you and admire all the things, but eventually a storm is going to come and if you're built on sand, it's going to tumble down. For some people, that storm never comes. 
They have little to no interest in religion or God. They do nothing for their foundation. They have things, they enjoy life, they go to their great act. For them, the storm is going to finalize and come on judgment day. So either those that are dead in Christ or those who are alive and remain, Scripture tells us, judgment is coming. The only thing that matters is whether Christ is in our life and our foundation is secure or has it. You see, a solid foundation, if you have it, you're going to stand. If not, Scripture says you're going to be swept away when the storm comes. Now, I'm not trying to scare people. I know a lot of people think that, or you just try to scare me into living for God. I'd rather you serve God because you love Him than because someone tried to scare you into it. Because the fear will only last so long. I do not preach so that you'll be scared yeah. and live for God. I preach that you will grow and love God enough yeah. to serve Him because I see and the Word of God tells us that there are many in the last day that lose their first love. In closing, I want you to look at these scriptures. Listen to the passages that they describe a day that's coming. Ezekiel says, I will break down the walls right to its foundation. And when it falls, it will crush you. Then you will know that I am God. Luke says it like this. I will show you that what it is like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. And when the floods sweep against the house, it will collapse to a heap of ruins. Ephesians says it like this. So how do Gentiles, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house. We are the temple. And building on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, we build in this church according to this. Not traditions, not to what we think is okay or not okay. We don't just uh, think of you know, I'm going to go to this church because I agree with their way of thinking. If you come to this church, you're going to say, I agree with the way that God said it, and I want to do my best to follow everything that he said to put in my life. We are built on this foundation, and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. So in closing, as we think of this wise builder that was described to us in Matthew, I want you to think for a moment. And we're going to pray and we're going to take spiritual inventory on this last Sunday service. How did this man, this wise builder, differ from the foolish man, the foolish world? What was different? Anyone know? What was so different? That one was wise, and one was foolish. Did he work harder? No, I don't think so. No. Because they both had beautiful houses in here. What everybody walked by, what everybody saw, it's a beautiful house. I love to live in that house. Beautiful. I think it appears visual.
we see in Scripture, the foundation that He chose
the 2020 pandemic Rock Truth Foundation. I believe the storm in 2021 is going to hit you even worse. And I don't know what it is. I, I pray things get better, but I think things may get worse before they get better. And it really doesn't matter. Storm is going to blow. Rains are going to fall. It's going to happen. What really matters is will your house stand the test when it comes? What things have you allowed in your life in 2020? What are some things that you need to get rid of out of your house and check your foundation and make sure that it is ready for 2021? What things do we need to search today? Because the importance of our foundation it's too important just to focus on the walls and on what everyone else sees. We need to focus on what God is looking for. Are you doing everything that God says you must be doing? Can we stand?